Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Shimmerler15. I'm the teacher in this chat, as you can see. And today, we are going to learn about... Um, let me actually retype it here so that everyone can see it. Okay, so we today we are going to learn about punctuation, but not all the punctuation marks, just four of them today. So today, we are going to talk about commas, semicolons, colons, and question marks. Oops, question marks. Yeah, this lesson is for intermediate and advanced students. So if you're a beginner, you're, you're likely not going to understand anything I say. So this was really meant, I should have mentioned that. I normally mention it, but for some reason I forgot to this time. But if you, but if you still want to listen, like you can just try to follow along. I will try not to, to speak like in a mumbled manner like some natives do. I will try to speak as clearly as I can. Okay, so let's see. Let's talk about commas first. Can anyone tell me what a comma is? Or at least provide an example? Like you could just even just type the mark in. I, I don't care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It looks like that. It's just that one little that one little mark. Is she used to separate clauses? Well, we'll get into that. It is used to separate clauses, but it depends. Okay, so we have many rules for using commas, and these rules are quite important because misusing commas can lead to weird results, weird and awkward results, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So actually, here, let me show you right now. So let me show you the importance of commas, and you've probably seen this example before. What is wrong with that sentence? What is it missing? I mean, it's not grammatically wrong, but I don't think you want to say that. It means something different from what you intended. Yeah, exactly. It's missing a comma. You don't want to eat your grandpa. You just want to eat with your grandpa. So you need a comma. Okay. Yeah. So. One thing. One thing should I add to the thing you said earlier? Uh -huh. So, I don't think we need the exclamation mark because it's like hard to eat your grandpa, and it's not a thing to be proud of. So you shouldn't make the exclamation mark included in your sentence. That's what my point well, of view. Actually, it's fine too. If like if if you want to show that you're excited in that sentence, you can use it, but you don't have to. You can just use a period too. It it depends on how it depends on the context. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like nobody get, nobody gets excited about eating his grandpa. <laughs> oh, you mean the other sentence? Then, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. guess, yeah. Okay. Um. I mean, honestly, I think that you could use it in either either sentence, but I mean, it depends on the tone and the context. So, just. Okay, um, but that, but anyway, this would be the intended form. Let's eat grandpa, let's eat grandpa, you know, with a comma. So that's why gra commas are quite important, because taking them out when you mean to put them in can make sense to sound really awkward. Okay, so now let's go into the rules. Rule number one. And I will put this in the chat. Rule number one. Use commas to separate independent clauses when they are joined by any of these seven coordinating conjunctions. And, but, or, I mean for, or, nor, so, and yet. But first, can anyone tell me what an independent clause is? Uh, 
uh, with a subject and a verb. Yeah, you're close, close. But the thing is that dependent clauses can also have a subject and a verb. But there's one important thing that separates a dependent clause from an independent clause. And the key word here is independent. Um, it's like you're not waiting for another clause. You can just uh, let it as it is. Well, can yeah. You give it meaning. I think oh. I have the definition of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the independent clause is that the one that can stand alone as a sentence. So you express your complete idea or your thought. And on the other side, a dependent clause, the one that you cannot stand alone, and it cannot be a complete sentence. So that's, I think, the main idea between. Yeah, them. the independent one ha has a uh, has a subtle meaning, but the one, uh, but the other one, the dependent one, depends on another one because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, or, or exactly. Or yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, all those answers are good. Yeah, they're all correct. Yeah, an independent clause can function by itself. A dependent clause cannot. Uh, nice content. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so let me show you guys an independent. Oh, the class is going fine. Thank you. Um, let me show you an an example of an independent. I can't spell today. An independent clause. Uh. Oh, thank you, Toxic Cat. Um. And then a dependent clause. Okay, so an independent clause would be something like, I worked all night. And it's independent because it can stand by itself. It has a subject and a verb like every, pretty much every clause, but it can function alone. But a dependent clause, which also has a subject and a verb, cannot function alone. You can't simply say, because I said so, because that's not a complete thought. So what makes this clause dependent is that it needs another clause, an independent clause, to be complete, to express a complete idea. Hence, it's, in, hence it's dependence. And there are other names for this too, like an independent clause is also called a main clause and a dependent clause is also called a subordinate clause because it's subordinate because it relies it relies on another clause to be complete okay so those are just other names for that for those terms yeah, that's the difference. Independent clauses express a complete idea. Dependent clauses do not. Okay, so. So can you replace the word of subordinate clause by the sub, uh, how can I say it? Um, it's not the original one, but it's like the sub original one. Do you get what I mean? Um, no, could you ask that again? I mean, can we replace subordinate word because it's like complicated word? Can you replace it with another word? I mean, yeah, you could, for example, like say, if it says saying the subordinate uh, clause, you could just use the term dependent clause if that's what you mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like again, they're, they're, that's just another name for saying the same thing. You don't have, you can use either term. Okay, um, I think you mean to say clause there, toxic cat, but I, um, I think, no, I think these two form, uh, these two categories are mutually exclusive. Like, it's something can be either a dependent clause or an independent clause, but not both. Well, a clause is a, is, uh, is a part, is, it's something that has a subject and a verb. So, so for so for example, like I was here. This is a clause because it has a subject and a verb. And 
again after the f after the fire broke out is also a clause because it has a subject and a verb. It's just not a complete sentence, but it technically is a clause because it has a subject, the fire, and the verb broke out. Clause doesn't necessarily mean sentence, as you can see here. Okay, um, let's go ahead and go into the, f uh, back to the first rule of commas. So remember, you can use commas to separate independent clauses that use a coordinating conjunction. And if you remember, a coordinating conjunction, there are seven of them in English, and they are and, but, or, for, nor, yet, and so. And there's also a useful acronym for remembering these it's called FANBOYS, which, and of course, it's not hard to figure out what stands for what. FANBOYS for, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. You can remember the uh, conjunctions that way. But anyway. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mind Freak. Okay, so here's an example of a comma separating two independent clauses with one conjunction. So you could say, let me just, let me just copy these examples. The game was over, comma, but the crowd refused to leave. Here you have two independent clauses. The game was over and the crowd refused to leave. And they are separated by a uh, comma after over and the coordinating conjunction but. So that's one example. So another example would be this one. And let me actually type out what, let me actually diagram the sentence a bit. So that's easier to understand. Oh, well, thank you for the apples, everyone. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Yesterday, I guess I'll give that one a thumbs up too. Okay. Yesterday was her brother's birthday, comma, so she took him out to dinner. And we have two independent clauses as I just typed here. Yesterday was her brother's birthday. That's the number. That's the first one, number 1. And oops, I meant to put so there, not but. My mistake. Sorry. The coordinate conjunction is so. Okay, um, but the independent, independent clause number two is she took him out to dinner. So you have two independent clauses and one coordinating conjunction. So, and there you use a comma before the coordinating conjunction, not after, before. And you put a space between the conjunction and the comma. Clause two isn't dependent because it can function as a sentence by itself. Both of these two these two clauses can are can be sentences. They can be rewritten as standalone sentences. That's why they're independent. Okay. Now clauses are clauses are not always sentences, as I just showed, because you could say something like, "Because I said so." Because. That's a clause, but it's not a sentence because it's not a complete thought. Okay. Oh, well, thank you, William, and Fancy. Okay, um, and here's one more example I'll just post. Is it okay to omit the comma in your example? Would it be grammatically correct? I would say, it, that's actually a really good question. Usually, no, it's not fine. But if the clauses are really short, then you can. So, for example, you could say, Let 
Let's see. I'm trying to run. So you could say something like this. I ran and she swam. Like say we were both doing exercises yesterday. I ran and she swam. You don't need the comma there because these two clauses are really short. And putting the comma in there might, you know, give an unnecessary pause to the sentence. It might it won't make it flow as well. So in set in cases like that, you don't need the comma before the conjunction. But where but if you have long clauses then or medium sized clauses, then yes, you need a comma. So normally you need a comma, but there are some occasions where you don't have to use it. And where you probably shouldn't use it because again that would ruin the flow of the sentence. Okay. Um so that's that. Uh before I continue, does anyone have any questions? No, I wouldn't say I ran, comma, she swam. Well, actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Normally, you can't separate clauses like that, but I think there might be a few exceptions. But anyway, let me just keep going. Okay, so rule number two for commas. Let's try to get through these as quickly as we can. Okay, so rule number two. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. They're both independent clauses. Maybe only an enumeration would be good. Yeah, that's. I think that's how I would see it. And what he means by enumeration is like when you're counting things. Are listing things. <laughs> That's funny, Toxic Cat. Okay, um, but anyway, rule number two use commas after introductory clauses, phrases, or words that come before the main clause. So, here's an example. So, let's say, let's talk about, let's use one with a clause. Here's an introductory clause. And let me italicize it. Uh, while I was eating, the cat scratched at the door. So here we have an introductory clause, while I was eating. And you put a comma after it because it's introducing the rest of the sentence. That is, the cat scratched at the door. So that's an introductory clause. A clause that's introducing the sentence. And another example would be this one. Ooh, let me not do that. When the snow stops falling, we'll shovel the we'll shovel the driveway. Again, introductory clause, when the snow stops falling. And then the rest of the, the rest of the sentence is we'll shove the dri shovel the driveway. Okay. So that's what well, that's another case when you use it, but don't do it the other way around. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's take the sentence. Let's take the two sentences we had before. Okay. So let me. Yeah, you can't use conjunctions like that. That's not right. Yeah, you're right. Because the when in there is already a conjunction, so there's no point in adding an and. Okay. Um, I should point out subordinate conjunctions, too. Subordinating conjunctions, I mean. But let me just talk about this first. If we don't need any conjunctions, that means it is an independent clause. Well, I think a better way to say is that an independent clause uh, just can just stand alone. Like, you, it can have a conjunction, like, such as, like, you can put and in front of it, which, although a lot of people don't like doing that, but really an independent, 
really an independent clause means that um, the sentence can express a complete thought. Okay, so let me go back to this example. The cat scratched at the door while I was eating. We don't use a comma here because when you have a subordinate clause, a dependent clause at the end like that, you know, you don't put a, you normally don't put a comma in front of it. There are some, there are some exceptions, but normally you don't because here nothing is introducing the sentence. And to bring back the other example I had. So knowing that here, let me do this. Hello. Hello, enjoy. Okay. Let me just change this around. What is wrong with this sentence? Hmm? Did you check that thing I told you for the for the second one? No, not yet. They have intended or they have no. Okay. okay, sorry about that. Um yeah, exactly. There shouldn't be a comma in that example. So just take it out. Yeah, exactly. You guys got it. So it should be... Yeah, exactly. Boeing 777 got it. We'll shovel the driveway when the snow stops falling. Yeah, or you could do it like Emery did here. When the snow stops falling, we'll shovel the driveway. You could do it that way too. You have it close here, but there needs to be a space. Yeah, exactly. Just as mine Hello? did here. Okay, so, um, let's go ahead. Okay, but here's an, ex here, let me show you guys something. But here's an example where it's fine to put a comma before the subordinate clause at the end of the sentence. So, it's okay, Alge, don't worry. It happens. Okay, um. She was still quite upset, although she had won the Oscar. Here, it's fine to use a comma here. But in other examples, because actually taking it out would sound a bit weird. But here, you can leave it here because... Wait, what? Oh my god. Sorry, I heard something in the background. Okay, um... Right. Okay, um... So, here we're using the... Ex here we're using the example, she was still quite upset, although she had won the Oscar. Here we use, we use a comment because we're trying to express extreme contrast. So for clauses, subordinate clauses that express some sort of contrast, um, you can use a comma there. So it's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, please mute yourselves or at least reduce your background noise. Okay. Um, and for phrases, there are examples for phrases. So... Here's an example of an introductory phrase. Oh, good night, Johns. So, having finished the test, he left the room. So we need a comma here because this phrase is introducing the sentence. Oh, you want me to repeat that sentence? Okay, well, I said, it says, she was still quite upset, although she had won the Oscar. Okay. Uh, like, sorry. 
I hear there's some noise like in the background in my end because like apparently a wasp entered the house and my sister and mom are trying to kill it. But anyway, um, I think they got it. <sighs> okay, um, so let's see. Yeah, they're gonna. They, I think they killed it. It's fine. Um. So that's an introductory phrase. Uh, an introductory word would be something like this. Kill it with fire. <laughs> Okay, um, well, perhaps he meant no harm. Again, an introductory word this time. Okay, I, I love, I love this. I love this picture you posted right here because it is so accurate. Although I should, I should, I should, I should point out the intricacies of using the Oxford comma because there's some debate as to whether or not you can use it. So I will address that later. But thank you for reminding me. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So, again, basically, if, if you're introducing anything in the sentence, use a comma. <laughs> okay. Yeah, guys, seriously, do not forget to mute your mics. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, and here's number three. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just address what someone just said right now? That I think I should address that. Okay, so use commas. Wait, hold up. Let me find an example here. I'm trying to find... All... Okay, here we go. Let me change this. This is rule number five on this um, article, but I will change it to rule number three. Let's just change it to rule number three because what someone posted here is actually a very important example. Okay. If you're a beginner and you still want to attend this lesson, that's fine, but just know that it's not really intended for you. More, more for experienced students, but if you but if you could still follow along with me, great, that's great. Okay. Um, rule number three: use commas to separate three or more words, phrases, or clauses written in a series. Yeah, my freak. I'm going to answer that right now. So let me go ahead and. Yeah, enumeration, exactly, enumeration. So whenever you're listing something or counting something or anything like that. Okay, so for example, Yeah, if you're a beginner, you can understand me fine. That's fine. Then stay be stay around. Then stick around. Okay. Um. So, for example, here I'm separating several uh, predicates. You know, the thing that comes after the subject. So, I did the dishes, ironed the clothes, and vacuumed the floor. Do you have three items here in the series? So it's perfectly fine to use commas here. And you can do it. And you don't have to do it with like sets of words. You could also just do it with words, like single words themselves. So for example, you could say, um, let's see, I have toys, games, and comics. I have toys, games, and comics. No, Johns, it's not wrong. You can do that. that that's perfectly fine. I got it, don't worry. Oh, okay, thank you.
Thank you so much. Okay. So, as I was saying... Uh, going back to my example, let me just post it here. I, I don't feel like scrolling up. Okay. I have toys, games, and comics. Three items in the series, and they're single words this time. But they don't have to be predicates or words. They can also be clauses. Um, yeah, let me... Ooh, this is a good one. Let me copy this example right here from the article. The prosecutor argued that the defendant, who was at the scene of the crime, who had a strong revenge motive, and who had access to the murder weapon, was guilty of homicide. So you have three clauses there. Who was at the scene of the crime, who had a strong revenge motive, and who had access to the murder weapon. Actually, you have more than three clauses, but we have three relative clauses in a series. And if you don't know what a relative clause is, it's a clause that starts with who, what, where, when, why, how, I think, as well as that, which, or let me see, actually, I don't think when counts, never mind, where, when and where don't count, sorry, or why, okay, yeah, relative clauses start with who, whom, what, that, and which, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So that's what a relative clause is. Can you use and after a comma in every sentence? You mean like, I think you mean, I think you mean after, I think you mean and after every comma. If that's what you mean, then no, please don't do it. Like you only, you really only need one and. Unless, you, if you want to use multiple ands and just take out the commas. So you could say something like this. I have toys and games and comics. Here, you, you don't need a comma. Do not include it. That would, that would just be overkill. So, like, you, you, so do you see how and and commas, you have to be careful with how you use them. Oh, you meant for only, only for one comma? Oh, okay. Close. Remove the comma after has. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Oh, you beat you beat me to it. Yeah, yeah. There you go. See, you got it. Okay. Now to call. Now to uh, address what someone said earlier about the Oxford comma. So an Oxford comma, otherwise known as a serial comma. Oh, you're welcome. Metal. So they're, it's, they're both called a, like a serial comma or an Oxford comma. This is a comma that's used to separate uh, the second to last item in a list from the last item in a list. And there's an and bef between those as well. So, for example, you could say, here, let me type this. Used to separate last item from second to last item. Why don't we need a comma in that sentence? Do you know the man who lives next door? Actually, uh, there's actually a good point. I, I forgot to mention something about that. Um, I'm going to cover that in a bit, so hold on to that question. So hold on to it for now. Okay. So. Um. Going back to what I said, uh, if you're wondering whether or not, oh, let me provide an example of an Oxford comma. So, oh, bye, cat. Thank you for coming. Okay, so this quite this this sentence here has an Oxford comma. I have a notebook, a pen, and a pencil. And the Oxford comma is before the and here. So it separates the um, second to last item from the last item. But you can also, you actually don't need the Oxford comma. It's not required. 
some people want to use it, but some people don't want to use it. it you, it's actually pretty optional. So you could say something like this. So you could do that. So. And in that one, there's no Oxford comma. I have a notebook, a pen, and a pencil. So you actually, you actually don't need the Oxford comma. Um, some people want, some people say you should use it. Some people say you shouldn't. It does, it really does not matter. You don't have to use it. But I, I personally use it, but there are some people who don't. That being said, Here, hold on. I'm trying to find something here. Is there any meaning difference if we use Ox the Oxford comma or not? No. No. Uh, well, actually, here, let me find an example. There's one thing I need to point out here. Oh, this is perfect. Okay. Um... This is, this is perfect. This is a really perfect example. Okay, so normally you don't need to use the Oxford comma, but if you're not going to use it, then you need to pay attention to how you order the words in the list. And here's an example. You have to pay greater attention when you don't use the Oxford comma. So let's see. And someone asked earlier, is there any mean difference if we use the Oxford comma or not? In a sense, yes. Oh, actually, I like, yeah, see, someone here posted a good example. Valen posted a good example. I invited my best friends, Anna and Maria, or Anna Maria, however you pronounce that name. Here, this means that you, means that this, this is implying that Anna and Maria are your best friends. If you mean to say that, then that's fine. But if you want to, sep if you're not saying, if you're saying that your best friends are different from Anna and Maria, meaning that Anna and Maria aren't your best friends, then you need a, then you need that Oxford comma. So you need to say, I invited my best friends, Anna and Maria, not your best friends who are Anna and Maria. So that's a good example. And here's another example. This book is dedicated to my parents, Ayn Rand and God. So... Are Ayn Rand and God your parents? Because without the Oxford comma, that's what the sentence would mean. But no, that's obviously not what you want to say. So to fix the sentence, we need to add the Oxford comma. This book is dedicated to my parents, Ayn Rand, and God. Of course, if you still want to use the Oxford comma, I mean, if you still don't, I'm sorry, if you still don't want to use the Oxford comma, then just change the order of the words so that it's clear what it's clear as to what you meant. So, for example, you could say, so you could say this. If you still don't want to use the Oxford comma, you can say this. This book is dedicated to Ayn Rand, God, and my parents. See, the the meaning is still the same, but you're 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 paying attention to the order of the words so that you don't accidentally say something you don't mean to say. So if you're not using the Oxford comma, watch how you order the words in the list. But if you are using the Oxford comma, then you don't have to worry about the order because the comma will make it clear as to what the as to what you mean. Can you use colons instead? No. And I'll talk about colons later, but no, do not. Okay, bye, Fancy, and Kevin, and anyone else who's leaving. Thank you for coming. Okay, so... So, normally, uh, normally, I use the Oxford comma. I just don't like not using it. It just doesn't look good to me, but it's a, it's, it's a choice. You can, use, you, you can use it if you want, but you don't have to. But if you're not going to, watch how you ordered the words in the list. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about what someone said or asked earlier. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. 
Yeah, exactly. Unless you're, unless, like, it, whether or not you use the Oxford comma is up to you, but if you omit it, you can cause confusion. So again, watch how you order the words. Lady Gaga and Humpty Dumpty are obviously not your parents, so put the comma in if you don't want to change the order, or change the order. And you can just leave the Oxford comma out. Oh, you know, I'm sure you'll pass your English test if you've been studying, which I'm sure you have. Okay, let's see. So this sentence here. Do you know the man who lives next door? I'm going to let you guys answer this. Does this question need a comma? Think about it. What do you think? Does it need one or does it not? And now a lot of people say no, and technically, yeah, you don't need a comma. But here's the thing. Actually, it depends on what you want to say. So let, let's bring that sentence back. Because if you put a comma in, the meaning's different. What's the difference between these two sentences? Do you know the man who lives next door? And do you know the man who lives next door? What's the difference? Because they're both grammatically valid. But there's a, there's a key difference here. No, there is a difference. It's, it's not nothing. Yeah, try to think. It's tricky, isn't it? There's a reason. Yeah, it has a difference. Do they sound the same? Not quite. Here, listen to how I read it again. Do you know the man who lives next door? Do you know the man who lives next door? Do you see how the comma in the second one introduces a pause? It signifies a pause? And second sentence are separate. Sentence, uh, the second sentence are separate questions? No. Thank you. Yes, exactly. Denix Apps once again has the right answer. Let me thumbs that up. Yeah, and exactly. In the second sentence, the second part is simply not important because we already know what man we're talking about. There isn't more than one man. There's just one man. Do you know the man, by the way, who lives next, who lives next door, by the way? That's pretty much what that sentence means. So that part that's separated by a comma simply doesn't matter. You can take it out and the sentence would stay the same. It, it, it would have the same meaning. But in the first one, the, that second part, it, the second part is important. Because there's more than one man, and you're wondering, okay, which man? The man who lives next door. See? Do you see the difference here? And again, listen to how I read these. Do you know the man who lives next... I'm sorry, let me read that again. Do you know the man who lives next door? Do you know the man who lives next door? Do you see how that pause there indicates that the second part isn't important? Because it's set off by a comma. So let me bring these two sentences back. So, the first sentence has a restrictive clause. A restrictive clause. A subordinate clause here that's restrictive. And the second sentence has a non-restrictive clause. Now, what is a restrictive clause and what is a non-restrictive clause? A restrictive clause is a clause that is essential to the meaning of the sentence. Meaning that if you take it out, the sentence would be more confusing because a, par a part of that sentence's meaning is gone. So, for example, let me, let me give you an example of a restrictive clause. The dog that was given a bath was taken to the vet. Here, the part that was given a bath is important. It's an important, it's important part of the clause, uh, sentence because if you take that out, we won't know what dog you're talking about. Restrictive clauses imply that there's more than one thing. Like, it implies a set of choices. And that's why they're called restrictive clauses because they restrict what you are talking about. So, restrictive clauses...
limit a set of choices. Basically, they imply a set of choices, and restrictive clauses limit those choices. Which dog? The dog that was given the bath. Now, non-restrictive clauses are different. They don't restrict anything. They're not essential to the meaning of the sentence because wh whatever that thing you're talking about is, it, that doesn't matter. It's simply a bonus information. So, for example, the book which I bought yesterday was ripped. This part, which I bought yesterday, is not important to the sentence because you can take it out and the sentence would still make sense. The book was ripped. So that middle part is not important. And we set off that middle part with commas because it's non-restrictive. But we don't set off restrictive clauses with commas. Never set off restrictive clauses with commas. So to recap, to reiterate... Yeah, see, you learned it from that lesson. Yeah, I have a lesson on that in which which goes into more depth. Like, with, with, in this topic, it, it explains that topic in more depth. That my, my video on the difference between that and which. But yeah. Restrictive clauses are never set off by commas. And by set off, I mean, set, like, surrounded by commas. Non-restrictive clauses are always set off by commas. Yeah, that's passive voice. Yeah, my channel is called English with Mr. C here. Let me type that in right now so that you guys know. Oops. Forgot to put a quotation mark there. Okay. Oops. And I forgot to make that plural. Okay. Okay. So, now you know the difference. Restrictive clauses matter to the sentence. Non-restrictive clauses do not. Oh, thank you, Denixap. Okay. Um... I went to the, the dentist with my friend, and he was afraid. I went to the dentist with my friend, he was afraid. No. Restrictive and non-restrictive clauses are subordinate clauses. So they are never independent clauses. And you have two independent clauses here. I went to the dentist with my friend, and he was afraid. So, no, I would say that is not correct. Okay. Okay, um... Oh, I just did a video on that because I wanted to, like, help people learn English with games. Yeah, I know about Among Us, but anyway. Um, let me keep going. So, basically, commas set off non-restrictive clauses, but they do not set off restrictive clauses. And remember, and I've said this several times before, restrictive clauses can also be called essential clauses or defining clauses and non-restrictive clauses can be called um let's see oh yeah non-essential clauses or non-defining clauses so they have they 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 these two have multiple names but they all mean the same thing. But I hear restrictive and non-restrictive mostly. So that's the that's the one I'm going to use. Okay. Um so that's that. Let me go ahead and go through the rest of this cuz there's still quite a bit for us to talk about. Okay. Um and I already talked about number 4. So let me post it here. Let me post it here, so, but I'll just go over it really quickly. Yeah, exactly. It's it says this person just posted, uh, sorry, posted. Yeah, uh, come non-restrictive clauses 
are always offset by commas. Restrictive clauses are never set off by commas. Okay. Um, but here's rule number four. And yeah, exactly. Would you lend me the book, comma, that you recommended last week? No. You never set off that by commas. That's correct. So you never set off that by commas. And the second one, but the second one's fine. Take out the comma and it's fine. Oliver Twist, which was Dickens' second novel, is a classic. Yeah, you need a comma there because that part, which was Dickens' second novel, is not important to the sentence. Because if you, if you let the commas out, then that would imply that there's more... That like there's that that um, Dickens has multiple second novels, and that that's not what you mean to say. So it has to be Oliver Twist, comma, which was Dickens' second novel, is a classic. I mean, comma is a classic. Although I should point out that while that can never take on commas, which can, but it doesn't have to. So which can be used in a similar manner to that. So which can also be used restrictively, like that. But that can never be used non-restrictively, like which. So, to make this clear, that clauses are always restrictive. Yeah, let me give a heart to that one, too. Which clauses can be restrictive or non-restrictive? So it depends, but let me just put that there. That clauses are always restrictive, but which clauses can be restrictive or non-restrictive? And it depends on what you want to say. But typically, people like using they re they they reserve which for non-restrictive clauses. They don't like using which for restrictive clauses. But you can if you want. You can use which for restrictive clauses, but just be careful with how you do it. Oh well, you're welcome. Bye. Okay, but let's go to rule number four. I might have to shorten this lesson because I talked a lot about commas. I might just have to, like, talk about just commas and semicolons and then save the rest for later. Because I don't want to make this lesson too long. I wasn't expecting it to be this long. How dare you steal my apple? Boo! Thumbs down. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so... No, I'm playing. But anyway. <laughs> okay, rule number four. And we just talked about that, but I will... Oh, thank you, Fancy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, rule number four. Do not use commas to set off essential elements of the sentence, such as clauses beginning with that, as I just mentioned, as, as someone else just mentioned. That clauses after nouns are always essential, as I just said. That clauses following a verb expressing mental action are always essential. So basically, don't put a comma before that, or comma. don't put commas around that clauses. Just don't. If you do it, people will tell that you are not a native. And this is something that German speakers have difficulty with, because that and which are mapped to the same conjunction in German, which is das. So... So they have a hard time, and in and, and German, you always use commas, regardless of whether or not a clause is restrictive or non-restrictive. And to tell the difference, uh, you just have to use different wording. But that can be learned. But yeah, that's just something to watch out for. So again, never use commas with that clauses, ever. In Russian, it's the same word, too. Yeah, that would explain it, because, it, like in German, I've heard that in Russian, you have to use commas more often, too. Okay, so that so that would make sense. Steals all apples. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I think I'm just going to talk about commas and semicolons right now. Uh... Yeah, I or maybe like colons and the colon my my uh the outlines on colons and punk and um question marks is pretty short, but that's okay. I think I'll just save that for later. I think I'll have another lesson tomorrow. Yeah, I think I'll have another lesson tomorrow, and I can talk more about that stuff there. But anyway, let's go to rule number five. No, I already did rule number five. Wait, no, let me go to rule number three, which I changed to. 
Oh, I already talked about rule number three. Okay, now I'm just confusing myself. Let me let me retype all these rules. Let me retype all these rules so that you all understand what I'm talking about. Let me do a little recap. I don't even attend my online classes. Honestly, <laughs> I'm kind of the same way. <laughs> And in one of my classes, I don't even have meetings, so I'm like, yay! But in one of my classes, I do, but I never attend them. I just watch the replays. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Let me retype these rules, because I just confused the hell out of myself. Ooh, number six is a really good one. I'm going to talk about that one in a moment because that one could trips up even native speakers. Oh, you're watching the Among Us video? <laughs> I should play more of that because that's a really fun game. Even if some, even because even those the random players kind of ruin it sometimes because honestly, some of them are just really stupid. But that's a different topic. Anyway. Um, yeah, we call them randoms. Random players, randoms, whatever. Okay. Rules so far. Yeah, exactly. I hate getting these to my game, too. Like, they ruin everything. Oh, my God. I, after the lesson is over, I think I'm going to tell you guys a little story about that, but I won't actually make it part of the lesson. I'll stop the recording before then. But anyway, let me focus. Yeah, they don't have brains, exactly. Okay, um... Rules so far. Uh, number one, use commas to separate independent clauses when they are joined by any of these seven coordinating conjunctions. And, but, for, or, nor, so, and yet. Number two, use commas after introductory clauses, phrases, or words that come before the main clause. Number three, Use a pair of commas in the middle of a sentence to set off clauses, phrases, and words that are not essential to the meaning of the sentence. Use one comma before to indicate the beginning of the pause and one at the end to indicate the end of the pause. Unless the, uh, the non-essential part is at the end of the sentence, then you just need to put a comma before the non-essential part and then the period after the, the non-essential part. Okay, number four. Do not use commas to set off essential elements of the sentence such as clauses beginning with that, relative clauses. That clauses after nouns are always essential. That clauses following the verb expressing mental action are always essential. Number five, use commas to separate three or more words, phrases, or clauses written in the series. And I need to talk about that one, number five, in a bit more depth because... Hold up. Because I don't think this one mentioned it for some... I don't know why I didn't mention it. Oh, no, that's under semicolons. Never mind. Never mind. L let me wait until later to do that. Okay. Um... You don't need... Oh, I should mention that, actually. Actually, no, I think I'll mention that later. Let me see, am I going to mention that later? Let's see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be under rule number 12. Okay, so Syrup, hold that, hold that, hold that question because there's an important rule here that mentions it. So hold on to that question. And when I call you again, try to, try to repost it. So just, just hold on to that question for now. Okay, um, let's see. So let's go to rule number six. Number six. Oh, you have to leave? Okay, bye. Thanks for being here. Rule number six. Use commas to separate two or more coordinate, coordinate adjectives that describe the same noun. 
be sure to be sure never to add an extra comma be between the final adjective and the noun itself, or to use commas with non-coordinate adjectives. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, by coordinate adjectives, they mean adjectives that that um, that are separate in a sense. So, for example, he was a difficult, stubborn, stubborn child. So, in this case, you have coordinate adjectives. He was a difficult, stubborn child. In that case, you need a comma between those two adjectives. But a non-coordinate coordinate example would be this. They lived in a white frame house. These are non-coordinate adjectives. You don't need a comma uh, between white and frame. They're both adjectives, but they're non-coordinate. So this means that they're not separate. So when you think about it, like here, here's how you can uh, analyze the two sentences. So this one is like, and I'll use brackets to, to, to make this uh, clearer. Oh, that's a cute dog. Okay, let's see. Okay, so do you see the difference between these two examples? He was a difficult, stubborn child. They lived in a white frame house. So do you see how in the second example, the adjective frame is part of the noun house, but in the first example, the, the adjective stubborn is not part of the noun child. So you can, so you can see the difference there. So if these ad so if so if one of the adjectives isn't actually a part of the noun, then don't use a comma. So just say white frame house. So there there doesn't need to be a comma there. But if these two adjectives but if but if the adjective before the noun is not a part of the noun, like in this case he was a difficult, stubborn child, then you need a comma. And it, the more you read, the the more you'll get it. Yeah, guys, I, I, not that I don't care about your dogs, but right now that's not really relevant to the lesson. So if you need to talk about this, then you have to go somewhere else. Okay. I mean, they're cute dogs, but we can't really talk about that right now. Okay, uh, let's see. He was a tall, handsome boy. Oh, we have an animals channel? Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, go talk there, because you, you can't really do that here. These rules are so common to rules in Russian language, it's very easy. In the Russian language? Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's what I've heard in one of my, that's what I heard in one of my uh, lessons, that, like, regarding adjective placement and regarding how commas are used, like, it's just, it's the same thing in Russian, from what I've heard. Okay. Um. Anyway. Metal posted an example here. Let's see. He was a tall, handsome boy. Coordinate. I got a big flat screen. Non-coordinate. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly it. You got it. That's a good example. You get a thumbs up from me. Okay. Um. So that's that. Okay. So let me show you. An ex so let me let me test you. Let me test your knowledge. Let me change that word. Does this sentence need a comma? Yeah, exactly. That's that's the best way to learn. If you if you tell if you show people grammatical concepts with examples and show how 
how they differ from non-grammatical examples, and that, that really helps. Instead of just giving them a bunch of rules to memorize, and it's like, and, and that's just not effective for me. Okay. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's it, Denix app. Yeah, it's like they're both describing the child. Neither is neither adjective is a part of the child, a part of the noun child, so yeah. Okay, so here's a question for you guys. She often wore a gray wool sweater. Does the sentence need a comma? Okay, so we have two no's and one, oh, three no's, four and five, oh yeah. Okay, so we have multiple no's, but a few yeses. Okay, so the answer is no. Because the, the adjective wool is a part of the noun sweater. So you, you don't really need one there. The, gray, the, the, the noun, I'm sorry, the adjective gray is describing the noun, the, the, the noun unit, I will say, wool sweater. Now, I'm not going to say that putting a comma in there is wrong. I'm not actually sure that myself, but I think you would make, I think the meaning would be slightly different. But really, you don't really need a comma here. But people would just mean, regardless, I mean, like, people would normally mean to not use a comma here. So really, it should just be, she often wore a gray wool sweater. Okay. So, no, the, the, the uh, sentence without a comma just sounds better to me, basically. Okay, but what about this one? Um, I don't think I'll have time to describe that. Um, I don't think I have time to explain that, but I do have a video that describes it, that explains the concept in more depth. So just go to my YouTube channel and watch that, because I do have a lesson that explains the difference between that and which. And I know, like, again, like, in, in, in Russian, it's it's like the, the same word, like in German. So that, that topic is tricky for uh, German and Russian speakers, but I do have a video that explains that. Okay, so I believe it's called English. My YouTube channel is called English with Mr. C. So look that up. You'll find it. It'll, it's easy. Okay, so yeah, and someone just can just post it there. That works too. <laughs> that too. <laughs> okay. Um. So let me show you. Let me ask you guys this. Does the comma here... Okay, so, your cousin has an easy, happy smile. Does the comma here need to be taken out? Okay, so some people say no, some people, actually everyone's pretty much saying no. Yeah, so basically, no. Yeah, you don't need to take it out because these two, because neither adjective is actually a part of the noun smile. So yeah, no, you guys are correct. The answer is no. The comma is fine. Okay, so... Let's go to rule number seven. Yeah, exactly. Easy happy does not make does not make much sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to rule number seven. Rule number seven. I mean, there were like ninety nine people before, so that, that that's I've never seen that. And who and if the and if the limits were higher, imagine how many people 
would have come in the beginning. Like that would that would have been amazing. Like over one hundred. But anyway. Let's see. Rule number seven. Use a comma near the end of a sentence to separate contrasted coordinate elements or to indicate a distinct pause or shift. Now what does this mean? Okay. So let's provide an example here. So what this means is that if you have something like a contrasted adjective like this, he was merely ignorant, not stupid. In that case, you need a comma. Taking it out would sound really weird, but you need the comma there because that indicates a pause. So that's what that so that's what this means. You have two coordinate adjectives there contrasting each other. He was merely ignorant, not stupid. Okay. And another example would be the chimpanzee seemed reflective, almost human. So again, the same same example, the same logic as before. Reflective contrasts human, so you need a comma there. Okay. And you can also do this with question tags. If you don't know what those are, it's like when you, you have a statement at the beginning and then the question tag and a question tag at the end, and then you separate it by a comma. So for example, you could say this. You're one of the senders' close friends, comma, aren't you? So you can do that. Or you can say, yeah, echo questions. Basically, yeah, you could, you could call them that. Or you could say something like this. You can speak Spanish, comma, can't you? So that works too. So, basically, oh yes, you can. <laughs> okay. Um, regarding Spanish, I forgot to mention one thing. This might be important for Spanish speakers in the chat. So, in Spanish, Oxford commas do not exist. You don't use them. In English, oops, let me point that out. In English, Oxford commas do exist, but they are optional. So I, I forgot to point that out earlier. So that's that's something important for Spanish speakers to know. In Spanish you can't use Oxford commas. It's simply you, you just you just can't. You use commas but you don't use Oxford commas. But in English you can. But you don't have to. Okay. So Oh, you're leaving? All right, bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Everyone. bye. <laughs> okay. Let me go ahead and continue. Okay, number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's... Ooh, this is taking longer than I expected. Um, darn it, we might not cover semicolons today. That's okay. I'll cover semicolons... Uh, colons and question marks next time. For now, let's just focus on commas because uh, there are many rules with commas in English. So I overestimated the time, underestimated the time we needed. Okay, so let's go to number eight. Okay. Okay, rule number eight. Use commas to set off phrases at the end of the sentence that refer to the beginning or middle of the sentence. Such phrases are free modifiers that can be placed anywhere in the sentence without causing confusion. If the placement of the modifier causes confusion, then it is not free and must remain bound to the word it modifies. So what does this mean? Okay, um, basically... If you can move the ad, if you can move the modifier around in the sentence, then then it's free. But if changing the if but if changing the modifier actually changes the mean of the sentence, then it's not free and it's bound. So let me show you an example.
Okay. So, Nancy waved enthusiastically at the docking ship, laughing joyously. Laughing joyously is a free modifier because the because it can be moved around in the sentence. So you could say something like this. Let me change the... So you could say it like this instead. Laughing joyously, Nancy waved enthusiastically at the docking ship. Or you could even say this. Nancy, laughing joyously, waved enthusiastically at the docking ship. So do you see how this modifier is free? Because you can place it anywhere in the sentence and the meaning would stay the same. But there are times where you cannot move modifiers around easily. In English, modifiers like, like adverbs, um, you know, modifiers like adverbs are often, and participial phrases like this, are often flexible. But there are times where you should avoid moving them around. Is it kind of bouncing? Eh, you could think of it like that. But basically, the idea is that it's not, you could change this, you could change the position of the modifier without changing the meaning of the sentence, provided that you place the modifier in sensible places. So don't play, put it in a completely random place. Which gives a stronger description. Nancy, laughing joyously, waved enthusiastically at the docking ship. I mean, honestly, they all mean the same thing. I don't, I don't see any difference between them in terms of emphasis, and certainly not in terms of meaning, so it really doesn't matter. But... Here, this is wrong. Lisa waved at Nancy, laughing joyously. Okay, but who's laughing joyously? Lisa or Nancy? We don't know. So, let's change that. So, let's put this at the beginning. Oops. Let's see. Laughing joyously, Lisa waved at Nancy. Okay, much better and far less ambiguous. Or, if you want to say that Nancy was the one who was laughing joyously, you can say this. Lisa waved at Nancy, who was laughing joyously. So now Nancy is the one who's doing the, who's doing the laughing. I mean, I guess there might be a slight difference in emphasis. Like, if you want to emphasize the laughing joyously part, you'd probably put that at the beginning of the sentence. But honestly, I just... Like, there, there is hardly a difference in emphasis, really. Like, the, like all three, to me, just sound the same. But, like, there, there really is just a minor difference. So, I guess, I guess there is a slight difference in emphasis, but honestly, the difference is so negligible that... Like even if you even if you're trying to emphasize that part, I I guess I know I just don't think people most people would notice. Like it's all three just sound the same to me. Okay, um, but yeah, I would say like just in case if you want to emphasize the laughing joyously part, like put it at the beginning of the sentence. Okay, um, okay, let's go to rule number nine. Yeah, that's what I basically said. Lisa, laughing joyously, waved at Nancy. Yeah, that works too. Okay, uh, let's continue this. Rule number... Let's see, rule number... Was it nine? Yeah, we're on rule number nine. Okay. 
Rule number nine. Use commas to set off all geographical names, items and dates, except the month and the day, addresses, except the street number and name, and tiles and names. So what does that mean? Okay, well, here's an example. Okay. Birmingham, Alabama gets his name from Birmingham, England. Birmingham, I'm sorry. Why did I say Birmingham? Birmingham, Alabama gets his name from Birmingham, England. So here, Birmingham is separated from Alabama because it is a city in Alabama, just as Birmingham is a, Birmingham is a city in England. So if you have like a city separate from a state or a country or whatever, use a comma. Okay. And here is another example. Okay. Oops. July 22nd, 1959, was a momentous day in his life. Who lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C.? That really should be two separate type examples. Okay, let me clean that up a bit. Okay. So, let me reread that. Reread that. July 22nd, 1959, was a momentous day in his life. Okay, so here we put a comma after July 22nd and after 1959, but not between July and 22nd. You don't put the comma between the month and the day. You just don't. Who lives at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, D.C.? So you don't put a comma in between the elements of an address, such as address, sorry, such as 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. But you do put a comma between the address, the, oops, the address, the city, Washington, and the district, D.C. Okay, so. Oh, and of course, there's here's another example. Here we have a, a title. Okay. Yeah, that example is fine, Metal. Okay. Rachel B. Lake, comma, MD, comma, will be the principal speaker. So here you set off MD um, with a comma because it's a title. And it's and if you're wondering what it is, it's a, it means master degree. So a degree, like a master's degree, I mean. But yeah, since it's a title, you need to separate it. And if, like, you could have PhD and, or BA, and in that case, you'd have to separate, you'd have to separate those elements, too. How many rules are left? Five. Yeah, like, these last few rules are pretty short. Oh, wait, six. But these last few rules are pretty short. The first ones were, oh, God, they took a while to talk about. <sighs> okay. Oh, that's right. I should also point out, when you use just the month and the year, no comma is necessary after the month or year. So, here's an example here. So, listening to what I just said. The average temperatures for July 1998 are the highest on record for that month. Does a comma need to be between July and 1998? Yeah, exactly. See, you guys are so smart. No. Why would you? Like, now if there's a day, like 22nd or 23rd, then yeah, put a comma after the, the, the day, the day number. But if it's just a month and a, the, a year, no, don't do that. Okay, because we have a good teacher. Oh, thank you.
honestly, not to brag or anything. I'm not. I'm really not trying to brag, but I've been told that I would be that I'm talented at teaching. Um, and I actually want to be a teacher one day. So, and I've actually tutored. So and it's nice to have practice. Okay. Um, no, I'm not actually a teacher, but I want to be one one day, like in math or maybe in ESL. I don't know. I haven't decided. I'm thinking math though. Um. Okay. Let's see. Rule number ten. Oh, that's sad. I wish you were mine. Aw. Oh, thank you, Skycy. Okay. Uh, rule number ten. Use a comma to shift between the main discourse and the quotation. So if you're saying off quotations, use a comma. So for example, John said without emotion, I'll see you tomorrow. You need a comma there because you're separating the quotation from another, from a sentence. Uh, shoot, hold on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you won't need it there. Does it need to be there? Okay, I'm back. No, it, it's not the wasp. The wasp is already dead. Uh, thank God, because I am deathly afraid of those, and I do not want to get stung. I've never been stung, and I don't plan on getting stung. <sighs> Although I have come close a few times, I think. Anyway. Um, uh, what was I saying? No, you don't need a... No, ABC, you don't need a colon there. I mean, there are times where you can use colons to introduce quotations, but here, it, it's not necessary. Ooh, your friend got stung on his tongue. That must suck. Imagine if you're allergic. Like, that's, your tongue will just... Ugh. But anyway, I don't want to scare anyone. <laughs> so, let me talk about rule number 10 again. In mathematics, you don't understand things. You just get used to them. There's some truth to that. Although, honestly, in my case, I like to understand the logic behind everything because, like, no, not that I don't need to know, I don't need to know everything, though. I don't need to know why zero factorial is one. But it's nice to know why, how to get it to a formula, and I'm like, it just helps me understand the logic of it. But anyway, uh, another example of rule number 10 is this. I was able, she answered, to complete the assignment. So here you can actually put that little tag there. It's called a dialogue tag, she answered. So you can actually put it in the middle of a quotation, but you have to set off both quotation parts of the quotation with commas. There are some things that are not understandable, well, according to me. Yeah, true. Okay, um, but yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, and here's one more example. Actually, let me not use that example. 
I don't like that example. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. See these 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 uh, last few com these last few rules are pretty short. And let me. I need to do something really fast. I can't believe I should have done this before. I don't know why I didn't. Hold on one moment, guys. Ooh, crap. I forgot. This is the, this is recording my... I'll, I'll just wait until after the lesson's over. It's all right. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, and Spanish punctuation marks are different. Uh, with, in, in this case, you use different punctuation marks. Uh, you use dashes instead of commas for quotations. That's correct. And there are also some funky things with uh, punctuation in Spanish, but I, I, I already. But I'm just going to talk about a few of them. I mean, I, I, I just talked about a few of them because there there are more peculiarities from an English speaker's perspective. I mean, anyway, uh, let's see. Use commas whenever necessary to prevent possible confusion or misreading. Okay. Um so we but we already really talked about this and the example they gave I don't think it's a very good one. Let me see if I could think of another example. Uh let's see. Oh crap. I think I put eleven twice. Okay. Rule number 11, use commas wherever necessary to prevent possible confusion or misreading. Okay, so, um, okay, let me go back to the example they used. Oh, well, yeah, I guess, again, there's that one, let's eat grandpa. You don't mean to say, let's eat grandpa without the comma, because that means you actually want to eat grandpa. So it's just say, let's eat comma grandpa. Again, just just use the comma, please. Commas save lives. Let's eat grandma and grandpa. Again, you need a comma there, but I know what you mean. You obviously mean to sh you're showing what happens if you don't use the comma. Well, if you're hungry, please don't eat people. <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. Uh, let me not use that. Example. I don't like that example. Okay, so, however, okay, so we talked about commas that, we talked about um, how important commas are, but let's talk about cases, we already, well, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm confusing you guys. Um, so we already talked about how important commas are, but there are times when they can be abused, so overused. And let me talk about these four instances. So try not to overuse commas. And I know it can be tempting if your language has different pronunciation rules. Again, I bring up German and Russian because they use commas more often than English does. But try not to overuse commas here. Oh, you're at their home already? Well, don't don't be eating them now. Okay, um... Now, this is a pretty... Now, number 12 is honestly the most annoying issue. It's the most annoying issue regarding commas. And there are people that do this, and it really annoys me. Don't don't ever do it. Please, just don't do it. I said abuse. I'm sorry. Abuse. Abusing commas. A-B-U-S-E. Abuse. As in overuse. Yeah, abuse as an overuse. When you abuse something, you that means that you overuse it. In in certain contexts, it means to overuse something. Hey, you stole my teacher. You you stole my apples. How dare you? Okay, but anyway, rule number twelve: don't use a comma to separate the subject from the verb. This is the most annoying mistake people make. Not everyone makes it, but there are some that do, and it just annoys the it annoys me. Oh, thank you for giving me back the apples. Um, but anyway, not knowing this, what is wrong with this sentence? Please fix this sentence before I get mad. No, I'm playing. But what is wrong with this sentence? I need to type it up first. Hold on.
What on earth is wrong with that sentence? An 18-year-old in California, comma, is now considered an adult. Yeah, facepalm. Yeah, exactly. So what do I need to do to fix that sentence? Because there's a huge error in it. Yeah, exactly. Just take the comma out. The comma needs to be gone. Yeah, exactly. Eliminate it. Like, reduce it. Kill it with fire. An 18-year-old in California is now considered an adult would be the proper way to say it. Yeah, exactly. I got a sniper for that. <laughs> you guys are funny. Okay, um... Now, in the same... Regarding the same logic... Oh, you know. <laughs> but anyway, can you please fix this sentence? Please fix that. It hurts my eyes. The most important attribute of a ball player is quick reflex actions. Yeah, exactly. Just take the comma out. <laughs> See? So if it's just a subject and a verb, or a subject and a predicate, which is like a verb, which is like a, a predicate is basically a subject, everything that comes after the subject. So it's like a verb or f with a phrase or just a verb or so on and so forth. But yeah, if, if, if it's just a subject and a predicate or a subject and a verb, just take the comma out. Just take it out. Take the sniper again. <laughs> Now, now, what about this? Now, now, if you have, if you have something, if you have a, a, um, a non-essential clause, you, you do need the commas then. So, so what about something like this? Now if you've been now if you've been listening to this lesson you should know what the answer to this is. So if I change the sentence like that. Wait, that's that's redundant. I'm sorry. Let me change that cuz that's embarrassing. Okay. Which should be strongly emphasized because I'm like I already said it was important cuz so it's like it's redundant. But yeah, basically, yeah, exactly. Um, should the commas be eliminated, though? I would say no. That's Now, in that case, it's fine. Because the, the yeah. part that's, which should be strongly emphasized, that's non-essential, so you need to set it off with commas. So, technically, the commas are fine here. So, the answer is no. The commas should not be eliminated. Yeah, but we can, I think, eliminate the, the after-emphasized no, no, yeah, you can't. Comma after emphasized. Oh, no, no, you can't because that whole part, which should be strongly emphasized, is not important to the sentence. So you need to you need to set off that entire part before and after it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, did you bend the uh, the rules? No. The comma. No. See here, I added a I added a non essential clause. So in that case, it's fine. But yeah, in the. Sure. Yeah, but in the other case, there wasn't a clause like that. It was just a subject and a verb. So I just took out the comma there. So there really is... So it's re there are really two different examples. Exactly. Okay. So... Okay, so here's another one that people... That some people make a mistake with, too. Yeah, I see metal, you fix your example. That's good. Okay. Rule number 13. Don't put a comma between the two verbs or verb phrases in the compound predicate. Now remember, a subject is what the sentence is about. Let me type that up. And the predicate is what comes after the subject. 
So, for example, this, so let me show you. So the subject here is, in this example is this, and the predicate is this. So he took the train. So the subject is he, but the predicate is took the train. Sometimes predicates can just be verbs. Other times they could be verbs with other words or verbs with phrases and so on and so forth. But that's basically what a subject and what a predicate are. Okay, so again, going back to rule number 13, don't put a comma between the two verbs or verb phrases in the compound predicate. And we say this because predicates are not sentences in themselves. So you don't need a comma to separate them. They're not clause. They're not independent clauses, and they're not. So, so they don't need to be separated with a comma. So, for example, yeah, exactly. He took the train is wrong. But anyway, what's wrong with this sentence? We laid our music and snack. We laid out our music and snacks and began to study. What's wrong with that sentence? There are two predicates here laid out our music and snacks, and the other one is began to study. And the subject is we. So how can you fix that? Because, again, you can't put a comma between uh, two predicates like that. So what's wrong with this sentence? What needs to be removed? Don't worry, guys, I'm almost done. I know, and I said it would be sh much shorter, but I wasn't expecting this to take that long. Um, I have After this, I have two more rules, and then we're done. Mm, not quite. There's something that needs to be removed from that sentence. Yes, exactly. Then accept. You got it. Good job. You, you don't need a comma there at all. You don't need any comma. and Like, no part of the sentence needs a comma. We laid out our music and snacks and began to study. So take out the comma. Yeah, exactly. Remove the comma. Because, again, you don't have two separate independent clauses. You have two predicates that are used with the same subject. In this case, we have a simple subject, that is one subject, with a compound predicate or two predicates. And you can have a compound subject with a simple predicate, so two subjects for one predicate, but I'm not going to get into that right now. A pledge a day keeps the commas away. <laughs> okay, um... So, now that you guys know what the right answer to that question was, how can you fix this sentence? Jeff told me that the job was still available, comma, and that the manager wanted to interview me. What's wrong with that sentence? Yeah, exactly. No comma. You don't need to separate the two clauses here because they're dependent clauses. Now, if they were in a series, so, for example, like, Jeff told me that the job was still available, that the manager wanted to interview me, and that I need to hurt, and that I need to hurry, then in that case, yeah, use commas, because those clauses, those that clauses are in a series. But since you have only two that clauses here, you don't need a comma. It's, it's no different from having two words in list. You don't need a comma. Just use and. So, yeah, no comma. Good job. Okay, um, oops, I accidentally skipped, whoops, I, that was actually part of rule 14, my bad, I skipped a rule. Um, no, let me just use, unable to eat diary, yeah, see, that's why you should use commas, because they need to say unable to eat, comma, diarrhea, like, their, sim their symptoms. So you need to separate those symptoms with a comma because symptoms could have more than one word. You don't need to actually eat diarrhea. I hope. But anyway. 
But I'm sorry. The, my last example here was part of rule number 14. Don't put a comma between the two nouns, noun phrases, or noun clauses in a compound subject or compound object. So that's what we basically did. If you have two noun clauses, as I just showed you here, Jeff told me that the job was still available and that the manager wanted to interview me. You don't need a comma there because it's just two items in the list. So that was rule number 14. Now let's go to rule number 15, and that's the last one. But before we do that, yeah, I'll list the source in, in the chat, and I'll put it in the, in the video description, too. Thank you for reminding me, actually. Okay, um, I probably should have posted that at the beginning so people could follow along, but that's okay. I'll just go ahead and post it now. So it's it's from a pretty credible site. It was a site that a lot of college write a lot of students in college use for writing professionally. Okay. Um let's see. So again so to regard to address what someone just typed earlier, the correct form should be unable to eat, comma, diarrhea. So that should be the correct form. And for this example here, they really mean to say disabled, elderly, pregnant. Oh, bye, Skycy. Thank you for coming. And children. They really mean to say that. Not, not, dis because there, there's no such thing as a disabled, elderly, pregnant child. There's no such thing. It's impossible. So they mean to say that. So there should be commas. But, you know, a lot of these are just from people either not knowing better or just simply not paying attention. So don't be like the people who do that. Okay. Um, normally I can forgive most grammatical mistakes, but this one is just embarrassing. So don't do it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you have some funny examples here. Unable to eat diarrhea. I'm like, you want to eat a diarrhea? Okay. I mean, I won't judge. No, I will judge. Don't, don't do it. So, number 15. Let's talk about rule number 15. Okay. And I think I talked about this a bit earlier. I'm surprised I didn't mention it later. <laughs> That's a good example. <laughs> the U.S. president, a racist and a misogynist. The U.S. president, a racist and a misogynist. Are you, like, in the second example, you're implying that the U.S. president is both a racist and a misogynist. But in the first one, they're separate items. And this is one of those cases where, I think this is one of those cases where you can't, Actually, no, you still can change the order of the words and, and, and not use the Oxford comma. But if you're not going to change the order of the words, then please, please use an Oxford comma. So the Oxford comma is important when the order of the words could lead to a misunderstanding, but it's not important if you can just re change the order of the words to, you know, get a different meaning. I mean, the same meaning, but without having to use the Oxford comma. Okay. All right, you're leaving? Uh, Boeing and uh, Braver Boss. All right, see you guys later. I'm almost done, but anyway, but if you guys need to leave now, that's fine. So see you guys later. Okay, um, let me hurry up and finish this. Rule number 15. Do not put a comma after the main clause when the dependent or subordinate clause follows it, except for cases of extreme contrast. And I talked about this a bit earlier, but let me just show you guys more examples. What is wrong with this sentence? Yeah, in fact, let me say. Please fix the sentence. The cat scratched the door while I was eating. Yeah, kill the comma. Kill it. Like, just kill it with fire. Snipe it, kill it, throw it in the trash, burn it up, rip it, do whatever you want, destroy it, just get rid of it. Okay. 
delete it even. But so that's that's an example of an incorrect use of was to kill it. <laughs> but that's an example of an incorrect use of a comma with subordinate clauses. But in cases like this, and I bring my this was my example earlier. She was still upset, although she had won the Oscar. This is fine because that second clause is, um, that second clause is providing contrast. Like even though she was upset, I mean, even though she won the Oscar, she was still upset. But anyway, uh, to prefer, to address what someone said here, while I was eating, the cat scratched the door. Yeah, exactly. In that sentence. In that case, it's fine to use the comma because that clause is introducing the sentence. But if it's not introducing the sentence and it's not providing a contrast, then don't use a comma. So, so don't don't do something like this. Please, tell me, please, please fix this sentence. What is wrong with that sentence? Yeah, exactly. Get rid of the comma. Assassinate it. Murder it. Eviscerate it. Liquidate it. Wasp the comma. <laughs> exactly. Just get rid of it. It doesn't need to be there. I went to the store because my mother wanted batteries. Like, and the thing, often, time, often you can tell whether or not to put a comma in by just listening to how it sounds when you read it, when you read the sentence. So let's read the sentence I typed. I went to the store because my mother wanted batteries. That pause in the middle of the sentence doesn't sound natural, does it? So let me reread it without the comma. I went to the store because my mother wanted batteries. Again, it sounds more natural. So nine times out of ten, you can tell whether a comma, sh sh whether or not a comma should be there by simply just reading the sentence. If there's an unnecessary pause, if, if you feel that there's an unnecessary pause, then then get rid of the comma. Just get rid of it. Put the comma in the comma. <laughs> I like cooking my family and pets. Yeah, I can't. That actually was an that was an actual issue in the magazine once, and I'm like, someone can't proofread. That that like I just I don't know. Like even sometimes errors like that slip slip through the slip through the editing process, and I'm like, wow, that's embarrassing. So don't make com don't make mistakes like that, please. So what that person meant to say was, I like cooking, comma my family comma, and pets. Or you could change the order. Of the, well, you still need commas if you change the order of the word around. Now, without the commas, it's fine, but it's screwed up. No, the width doesn't have to be there. Um, you can't. You can put it in there, but that would mean something different. Like what they're talk here. The person is talking about separate subjects: cooking, my family, and pets. The, the person likes all of those things. You could put the with in there, but that would mean something different. Like, that means that your family and pets are cooking with you. But I don't think that's what the person here meant to say. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. This is so wrong. Of course I did, Mom. Of course I did, Mom. Uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't be those... It's just, uh, no, don't just please make sure you use commas correctly. No, yeah, no incest, please. <laughs> God. And to provide an example, and I'll and I'll mute the I'll I'll censor the word here, so don't worry. I, this is something I saw in the Facebook post. Uh, let's see. You have so many funny examples. Without the Oxford commas, 
Without the Oxford comma, let's see. We invited the strippers, JFK and Stalin. So are JFK and Stalin strippers? No. You mean to say we invited the strippers, comma, JFK, comma, and Stalin. Although you would never... I'm not sure why you would invite the last one. <laughs> anyway. Um, let's see. What is... Here's a funny example. What's wrong with that sentence? We're, we're, it's missing something. What is wrong with this sentence? There, there, there should be something that's there. That, there's something that should be there but isn't. Let me type it here. Yeah, exactly. You love bleeping college, comma, guys. Not... You love bleeping college guys. I'm sure you don't mean that. <laughs> I mean, you, you, I mean, gay, for some, right yeah. Now. Huh? But if you're gay, this sentence, this sentence is already good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, we have different tastes and also, yeah, that 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 could, yeah. <laughs> or if you're a woman, then, you know. <laughs> but. Yeah, basically. <laughs> just just watch how you use commas. But you see, you guys get commas now. Um, but anyway, that is that those are all the rules of commas. And again, I will post the article that I read from. It's a really good article. You guys should read it. It's I don't like a few of the examples they provided because I don't think they not because they're wrong, but because they just don't they're not very clear, but most of the examples are pretty good. What does it mean when you say, I did mom? Uh, it means that you had sex with her. So, be, be careful with how you use commas, please. Anyway. Um, but yeah, enough about that. I don't want to make this too inappropriate. Of course, I did try to censor some things, so. But yeah, just basically watch how you use commas. <laughs> That's funny. Nice girl, comma, bike. Thanks, I got her off the dark web. <laughs> yeah, what he means to say is nice girl bike without the comma because girl is part of the. Uh, girl is a. Uh, adjective that's part of the noun bike. So, nice girl bike, but without the commas. So, again, that's an example of comma misuse. So, don't use commas when you don't need to. Please. Please don't. And please, don't forget to use commas when you should. Okay, so... I'm not going to bother recapping all the rules, because you guys can just read them from that website I linked. But the 15 rules here are quite important. And some of them are pretty much like similar in meaning, but are just talking about slightly different things. But yeah, basically, uh, I, follow those rules. Can you rules. pronounce your name so I can call you? Oh, okay. Um, my name is Chi Man Ruler 15. Chi Man Ruler 15. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question, Chi Man Ruler. Yep. Um, can, you, can you post these rules again in the chat? These rules, um, like uh, you collect them together and you, and then you post them again because I haven't seen them. I came now. Uh, okay, let me just do that then. I mean, I, I did. Like mean, if it's not uh, if not okay, then I will just look them up. But if you can collect them together, I mean, the whole rules, then you put them in the chat again. Actually, that might that might be beneficial for a few people. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna do a Denix app? Okay, cool. Yeah, you might. I might as well just post them here too. But anyway. Um. Let's see. Uh. Oh, someone posted something here. Please review the scan and let us. Uh. I mean, I think you mean to say let us know if it was approved. So Noel can send the sign to stand to file. This, yeah, here, let me fix that. 
let me fix that. And I'm assuming that this is a formal letter. So let me let me change this a bit. Uh, no, teacher. Uh, this is a commercially oh invoice that needs to be uh, signed and stamped. Okay. Well, let me let me uh, add. So I'm sending a draft, but I don't know if that phrase. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, good. Then Xap posted. Oh, ABC too. I'm sorry. Yeah, ABC did it. Sorry, not the Xap. But um, yeah, yeah, exactly. There are just 15 rules. Okay, so, uh, but yeah, thank you for doing that, ABC. Very useful. Uh, very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like about these lessons. Sometimes the students will help the teacher out by posting things, examples, or um, uh, other things. Okay, so let me just go ahead and do the. Uh, let me just fix uh, Diane's example here. This is how I would do it. I, that's just that's just how I would do it. Um, dear Eric, please review the scan and let us know if it was approved so Noah can send this sign. That should be signed, not singed. That's a different verb. Okay, okay. That sounds yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Noah can send the signed and stamped files. Thank you, and then your name. Yeah, that's how I would do it. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, let's see. Because in Soviet Russia, comma places you. Where did that meme even come from? Okay, but um, this is this lesson's getting a bit too long, so let me go ahead and just quickly wrap things up here. Yeah, you'd have to get the meme to be able to understand it. But anyway, um, that's the end of the lesson. So be careful with how you use commas. Don't use them when you shouldn't, and use them when you should. Because they can lead to misunderstandings, or maybe not even misunderstandings, but just really awkward readings. So, again, commas are important. Do not neglect to learn how to use them. And I actually read this one instance where there was this, there was a costly financial mistake because of a bit of a mis miscommunication regarding a missing comma in a, in a document between two parties, like some... There was a misunderstanding of the agreement simply because a comma wasn't there, and it was a financial mistake, a costly one. So, commas are important. Do not neglect to learn how to use them. Okay, but anyway, that's the end of the lesson. Um, yeah, com there's just so many things can to talk stay, about. But can, can I stay more so we have questions about other things in English? Okay, um, wait, what? I, I have uh, questions in English, I mean, related to the IBA form and the pronunciation thing. Um, can, can you do that, like, in other lessons? Or we get used to the pronunciation and American English accent, so I think it's really important to, to be familiar with the IBA forms, because... If you don't know how to pronounce the words correctly without knowing the IBA form, it will be really difficult for you as a learner. So you need to know these, th these things. I mean, if you can do a lesson in this week or next week or whenever you are free, I mean, it would be really helpful for us learners. Oh, I see what you mean now. Yeah, I, actually, yeah. that is a good idea. I should. But the thing is that I'm not. I don't know about, I don't know anything, honestly, about IPA or any other form. So I'd have to read up on that. But I could yeah. describe some pronunci pronunciation differences between American English, British English, and the like. Yeah, so. because I want to learn the American accent because I feel like it's the best accent. I mean, not the best, but it's the one that fits me more. It's the one that I like. And I'm really... I'm really excited to know more about it. So for that reason, I'm asking you to, to hold bus. Okay, okay, I see. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll try to come up with a list now in the future. It might it won't be this week or pot or next week, but it should be soon. So yeah. uh, it's okay, no problem. You can ask Cat. He knows about the IBA firms yeah, he... and the he's really familiar with all Okay, he's one of the best English and Rob too. They they're just so good in the IBA firms. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, they. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I just got here. Am I late? Or no? Yeah. It, yeah. The lessons are already you. finished. Oh, you already finished. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But don't worry. When is I. The next. Time? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. But. What time? I have you, a YouTube you channel. Can with the, the, yeah. You can find the things that we discussed today in the chat, the classes chat. So you will, you will get the benefit from them. Oh, okay, okay. And you can also just watch the recording. I yeah, someone posted a link to my exam, my my channel here, so you could just watch the recording that I'll post within a few hours. I record these lessons, so if you miss it, no problem. You can just watch it. Uh, thank you. Uh -huh. I'm almost with Mr. C. Yeah. Okay. So, team and ruler. I mean, regarding the topic that I told you. So, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I said, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, I'll try to come up with a lesson for that. So, yeah, okay. I'll yeah, and I'll wait for you. Okay. First. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, I know, yeah, MoCat and Rob are really good with regarding pronunciation. They know much more about it than I do. I hardly know anything about it. So, I'll be sure to consult them if I ever get confused on something. So, yeah, sure. Even if you can tell them to come with you, like you three explaining to us, <laughs> if they can, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if they can. I mean, we're all we are. Should we're be a all, really good idea. Yeah, yeah, and we're all speakers of American English, so yeah, we'll be able to yeah, really yeah, yeah. explain the the dialect. Sure. Okay, but anyway. So that's another lesson idea I'll try to do, but for now, that's the end of this lesson, and tomorrow I will try to cover, let's see, com. not sorry, we already did commas, I'll try to cover semicolons, colons, and question marks, and that'll be basically the end of the big, a beginner's guide to punctuation in English. Yeah, okay. Okay, but I'm literally asking myself right now why I stayed in the lesson while while I had why while I had migraine. You have oh you listened to this while you had a migraine. Yeah. Oh dear, I I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Um. Chim yeah. Ruler. Um. Are you a southern or northern in in the United States? Take a guess. I mean, southern maybe. Yes, <laughs> I live in Texas, but I don't have a distinct southern accent. It's pretty neutral, but yeah, I just I, I live in Texas though. I mean, I'm pretty familiar with that accent, so that's why I chose. Yeah, <laughs> southern. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like mine is mine is and stereotypically thick though. There are people who's who are even who's are even thicker than mine, but yeah, I do live in the South. Do you, do you mean like you're stressing the words or what? Do I mean what? Do you stress the words or what? I You said that you said that you're you're like you have a thick accent, which means that your words uh are being stressed by you. Oh then I guess Did I would say no. Did you get what 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 I meant? Yeah. In that case, I would say no. Okay. Okay, but let me just go ahead and end this lesson. So again, sure, sure. yeah, no worries. We'll meet soon. Yeah. Hopefully. Who is speaking right now? Are you? Is it? Oh, taking this. Oh, C cat. Oh, oh, it's you. Oh, I didn't even know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen you I, around. You've, yeah. Okay, cool. All Not right. Sure. Oh, so you were the one who said you had the migraine. Oh, okay, Braver Boss. Okay, I see. 
Okay. Who so, said what? Oh, not you. No, someone else. I'm talking to someone else. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're good. Okay, but yeah, no problem, everyone. I'm welcome. I'm happy to help you all know the importance of using commas and not to use them like an idiot. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this, and I will now stop recording.